بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم uh, We begin with Allah's blessed name We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the Blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh a greeting of peace on this the 22nd day of the month of Jumadi al Ula in the year 1444 and our topic is entitled again Ukraine Ukraine but this time Ukraine in the decline of Pax Americana. And we begin by reminding the truth cannot be secular. Truth cannot be relative. Truth has to be absolute. Truth has to be universal. Truth was there in the world before we were born, before the United States was born, before Britain was born. And truth will continue to remain in the world long after the sun has set for the United States and Britain. Absolute truth for us is in the Quran. For you, it may be elsewhere. For us, it's in the Quran. But absolute truth must explain reality. Absolute truth must explain the reality of the world today as well as yesterday and allow us to anticipate tomorrow. That is if you have truth with you. <coughs> and uh, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Mursalat, Allah spoke and said, Ba'da'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim in taliku ila zillin zi salasi shu'ab. I have quoted this verse several times, but there may be some who are listening to it for the first time, so be patient with them. Proceed to a shadow which will comprise of three parts. This is the Quran. The Quran invites us to think. It invites us, it demands that we must think it advises us to think critically. It declares that without insight you cannot think. It declares that it is with nur, with light which comes from Allah, that the heart can think. And that is what is lacking in the world today, even amongst those who teach the Quran. Around the world today, mankind is losing the capacity for critical thinking. And there are many analysts in the world today who would agree with me. Around the world today, mankind is losing insight because light is diminishing. We're not talking about external light, we're talking about internal light. And it is with insight, it is that, that capacity to interpret events that we can understand what's happening in the world today. And so proceed to a shadow. Those of you who have rejected the truth, proceed to a shadow which will comprise of three parts, warns the Quran and our interpretation and you should never accept our interpretation unless you are convinced that it is correct. And alhamdulillah, by my, incre my profile that is ever, ever advancing in the world of scholarship today, it, it indicates that there are many who accept and agree with my insight and my interpretation. My interpretation of the Quran is pointing to the Antichrist, the Jal, the false messiah. And that his, fin his footprints will comprise of three parts. You, can, you cannot see the Antichrist 
in history. You cannot see him in person. You can only see his footprints. It is only after the Great War has taken place, and the Great War has not as yet taken place, except for those ignorant people who believe that the Great War took place in 1452, when the Ottoman Empire conquered Constantinople. <laughs> Leave these jokers alone. The Great War has not as yet taken place, the Armageddon. And only after the Great War has taken place, and only after an, an event which comes after that, that is the conquest by a Muslim army of the city of Constantinople, only then would the Antichrist appear in person. This is Islamic eschatology. If you have a different answer, let's hear what you have to say. So until the Antichrist appears in person, the only way you can recognize him is by his footprints. Shall I repeat that for those who we are inviting to start thinking because they're not willing to think, or they've lost the capacity to think. The only way that we can recognize the Antichrist at work in history before he appears in person is through his footprints. And the Quran is telling us his footprints comprises three parts. And when we using this Islamic eschatological means of understanding the Antichrist, and we apply it to history, we find that Pax Britannica appeared as f the first part, part of the first part of that footprint of the Antichrist. It became a ruling state in the world. It used power to take control of the world. It used power to take control of the world in such a way that there can be no rival and no threat to Britain. And that was Pax Britannica. It used power to oppress, so it was not Pax. It was not a just or world order of peace and justice. It used power to oppress and to force the submission of mankind to its, me, to its agenda. And it also had no morals. It was a decadent empire which was unjust. It stole the world, the wealth of the world, through unjust means. It was a, established a system of legalized theft. But we don't have the time to go through all of that history. But what Pax Britannica did most of all, as we look at what is happening in Ukraine, and that is how you must think, you must be able to connect, con connect the dots of history. I'm talking most of all to those of my critics who still have the capacity to be awakened and to be able to learn to think. To these critics I'm talking. But there are those who are hopeless, so we leave them as they are. <coughs> what Prax Britannica did was most of all to use that power and control over the world to liberate the Holy Land for the Jews. The Holy Land was under Muslim rule. The term Holy Land has disappeared from public discourse today. We are the only ones who are using the term Holy Land now. They don't want religion to be applied to the subject, to the study of the subject, you see, until the Antichrist appears. So Britain liberated the Holy Land for the Jews, which was under Muslim rule. And that was a momentous event. It took a whole great world war to do that, the First World War. And then secondly, Britain brought the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. And that is how the Quran allowed us to identify that this was Gog and Magog, those who controlled power in the modern West, Gog and Magog. And then came that time when Britain began to show decline 
And uh, another power was emerging, the second footprint to replace Britain. And we saw it at the end of the Second World War, when in Bretton Woods, the US dollar replaced the sterling pound as the imperial currency, the means of monetary oppression of mankind, the US dollar. And then we saw it again dramatically so in, was it in 1955, was it? The Suez War? When the new government in Egypt, which replaced King Farouk, there was first General Naguib, and then came Jamal Abdel Nasser, and then the new Egyptian government nationalized the Suez Canal, which had been built by a French consortium, I think, Deceps, De Deceps. Um, and when they nationalized the Suez Canal, as they had, they had the right to do so, Britain and France and Israel, the three of them as three sisters, then attacked Egypt and took over control of the Suez Canal from the Egyptian armed forces and the Egyptian government. And then to the surprise of mankind, the new American president who was uh, uh, General of the Armed Forces, the American Armed Forces, General Dwight Eisenhower. He showed the world who is in charge today. He showed to the world, listen, look, it's no longer Britain in charge. We are now in charge. We are the ones who are ruling the world today. And Dwight Eisenhower ordered Britain and France and Israel to withdraw from Suez and allow the Egyptian government to reclaim the control over Suez, the Suez Canal. And what did Britain do? Britain had to withdraw, and uh, was it Sir Anthony Eden, the British Prime Minister, had to resign. And France had to withdraw, and even Israel had to withdraw, because this was Pax Americana. And what Pax Americana has done and this is the second stage of the three stages, was to provide the means through which Israel could continue to grow from being a baby to an, in, to an adolescent, to an adult, to a super state, to a super state, and to protect Israel all through these years from all possible threats and dangers. That is what Pax Americana has done for Israel. And now we see a, a stage in which we are witnessing the decline of Pax Americana. And I'm sh sharing this video with you to share with you my view. You don't have to agree with me. The, the, the final nail in the coffin for Pax Americana will be not in Venezuela, not in Syria, and not in Korea. The final nail in the oven, oven is not in Iran. The final nail in the, of, of, in the coffin of Pax Americana appears to me to be located, will be located in Ukraine. And I'm happy to find that there are other analysts, military analysts, who know nothing about Islamic eschatology, who are saying the same thing that I'm saying. I was very pleasantly uh, surprised to view uh, a video of um, well, the, the, the American Armed Forces didn't like him a lot, so they never promoted him beyond the, the, the title of a colonel, Colonel Douglas McGregor, he might himself listen to this video since his name is mentioned, but I give him the title of General McGregor, uh, General Douglas McGregor. McGregor means he probably has the Scottish origin. But uh, if you listen to General McGregor, Douglas McGregor, you'll find similar analysis 
from what is coming from Islamic eschatology. The truth is manifesting itself that the United States Pax Americana is in decline. We don't have the time to offer the proof and the evidence in this video what is going to happen in Ukraine, but we'll do it subsequently, inshallah, don't be disappointed. That the, what is happening in Ukraine now appears to be the crucible within which the ultimate decline of Pax Americana will take place. If Pax Americana was still Pax Americana, the, the, <laughs> the uh, Venezuelan government would have been overthrown long ago. <laughs> yes. If Pax Americana was still Pax Americana, then the Syrian government would have been overthrown and you would have had a, a, an ISIS, an ISIS Yankee Jihad government, a, a Yankee Jihad government, ISIS government would have taken over in Israel. And, and the war machinery of propaganda would have convinced the world that Islam is not ready to cut the throat of Israel. Israel is in mortal danger. We've got to do something to survive. We have to, we have to wage the big war on the Arab. It's so funny. Yes, this propaganda machinery and how they prepare for it with a, creating an ISIS. And so if Pax Americana was still Pax Americana, Korea could not be slapping them on their face again and again. If Pax Americana was still Pax Americana, could the Iranians do what they have done? Produce so many drones, which are now functioning uh, suicide drones, they're called Kamizani drones, which are functioning so successfully in, in, um, in, in Ukraine. And just imagine, if Iran were to ever be attacked, ever, if they ever make that stupid mistake to attack Iran, Iran will immediately become a nuclear power. If you ever attack Iran, Iran will instantly become a nuclear power. You can take that and put it in your pipe and smoke it. And if Iran becomes a nuclear power and they have mini nukes and you have hundreds of thousands of these drones and they, and they have mini nukes on them, what is the fate that awaits Israel? Hmm? If Pax Americana was still Pax Americana, Iran couldn't do that. There is overwhelming evidence with the perilous state of the US dollar now, an irreversible decline that Pax Americana is on its way out. And uh, we want to share with you our view that um, Ukraine is showing the limits of Pax Americana and that there is another power which is going to replace Pax Americana because the footprints are in three parts. Let me end this appetizer of a video because I'm not concentrating on Ukraine enough for you. To point out one of the fallouts of Britons acting as Pax Britannica with an unjust oppression of mankind is that religion cannot survive with oppression. If you oppress people, then the truth vanishes from the heart. Whatever remnant of truth you had with you would disappear when you become an oppressor. And Britain remained an oppressor for so long that today Britain is paying the price and it is no longer a, religion, a people with any religious truth with them. Religion is now becoming, Britain is now becoming an atheist state. That's right, an atheist state. The world's 
most famous atheist state after the Soviet Union. But whereas in the Soviet Union the Christians were fighting for survival against a state that was brutal in expression, in Britain the British people themselves have him themselves selling their churches and cathedrals and such. There's no oppression on religion. They themselves are doing it because we don't have we don't go to church anymore. So who is going to finance the upkeep of the church? That's why they have to sell them. Okay, and so a big a big church which has been a church for hundreds of years and generations of memories are there in that church and now it is sold and it's become mcdonald's hamburgers the same thing is happening in the united states this is the fate that awaits religion in the united states that whatever truth there was in the united states religious truth is in decline and will eventually disappear as it has disappeared in britain so can history be on the side of those who are becoming atheists? Can history be on the side of those who are oppressors? Can history be on the side of those who tell lies and are PhDs in misinformation and propaganda? This is an, an indicator of what is to come. If you have truth, you should be able to not only explain the past, penetrate the present, but anticipate the future as well. And so the third step of this, the third part of the, the footprints, which is to come, we have suggested would be Pax Judaica, when the Antichrist now attempts to get the state of Israel to pre replace the United States as the next ruling state in the world taking control of power in the world and using that power to so establish the, the authority of Israel that the Antichrist can now appear in person ruling Israel and declare I am the Messiah. When he does that it will not be a surprise to those of us who follow Nabi Muhammad Allah's blessing be upon him. It will not be a surprise for us because we understand what's happening in the world. It may be a surprise for the military analysts who don't know how to connect the dots of history, who don't have insight, but just analyzing the pieces of the puzzle. For these people, it may be a surprise. And we end by inviting them since there's so much affinity between your thought and ours, you recognize Pax Americana in decline. We recognize Pax Americana in decline. What you do not know is what is to come. And what we want to teach you from Islamic eschatology is what is to come. And in the same way that you had an, a Briton which ended up where it is today, a man can marry a man and get a marriage certificate. In the same way that you had a United States of America which ended up where it, where it is now ended up with a man marrying a man and getting a marriage certificate. So too you have an Israel which is to come to replace the United States which will be so decadent and so corrupt and so oppressive that it will suffer the same fate as Britain and the United States. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.